Now, I want to say a few other things related to what today is. I know I do this in Bible class every year. In fact, I've had entire sermons uh, a couple of times, maybe several times since we moved here on this Sunday related to this topic. Uh, as I mentioned to my Bible class, don't worry that I, I adjusted the length of the sermon. Uh, hopefully, I've, I've taken that into account so I could spend a couple of minutes talking to you about the most significant moral issue of our time that we as God's people need to be informed about and thinking about and speaking about and standing against. And of course, you know that I mean abortion on demand. And the reason this Sunday is why I'm taking a moment to give special emphasis to it as I, as I do every year at this particular time of year is because yesterday was the anniversary of the infamous Roe v. Wade decision. This is the Roe Court uh, that in, in 1973, on January 22nd, the court determined that unborn human beings do not deserve the protection of the law. And the, the Roe decision, many people do not understand this, and there's a lot of misinformation that, that obscures this, and in fact, it, it flat out denies it. But the fact is, the Roe decision legalized abortion on demand through all nine months of pregnancy, right up to the moment of birth. So that's how barbaric that decision was. And since then, 62 million babies have been cruelly lost in the womb. But something positive now that about today, so many who identify as Christian, many who share our biblical perspective, maybe we, we certainly wouldn't agree with all of them and their, their distinctive doctrines, but we use the word Christian in the broad sense that we share the same conviction for Scripture, for the Word of God, and the authority of God's Word. And so many who, who share our biblical worldview use this Sunday, the day after the Roe decision, as the Sanctity of Human Life Sunday to emphasize the biblical perspective on the value of unborn life. Isn't that precious? And I was using Psalm 139 as the benediction a moment ago, you formed me in my mother's womb. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made this precious little preemie here, beautiful image. The sanctity of human life Sunday. Now I know this isn't in the Bible, it's not an official holy day. Again, as I mentioned in class, some of you were in my class. Christmas isn't mentioned in scripture either, or Easter as times that we have apostolic uh, indication of, of designating a certain day uh, and yet we do appreciate those times and acknowledge them in some way and in a similar way I think we can acknowledge this uh, as, a, as a healthy and wholesome and scriptural tradition or perspective to take this Sunday to realize this is a time to renew our resolve to pray and to speak out on this issue to say and do what we can to raise awareness to it, to inform people, to inform each other, to encourage each other, to minister to those who are in need, those who have undergone, uh, even who have experienced the pain of abortion. It might be the case of someone here now who has uh, had an abortion or you have someone close to you who's had an abortion and we know many if not most all of those who do suffer from post-abortion syndrome and struggle with uh, guilt. And we want you to know that in Christ Jesus, we have forgiveness from any sin, from all unrighteousness. And there is healing in Christ. No matter what we've done, no matter where we've been in our lives, we can be cleansed by the blood of Christ and brought near to God and forgiven and made whole and have, have a new birth, a new beginning, a new life. That's the hope we hold out to those suffering in that regard. So we want to show compassion and consideration and sensitivity even as we show conviction and uh, stand firmly with moral outrage over what is happening in the devaluing of human life. So what is the biblical perspective? Again, this is something I've done whole sermons on before, tried to find different ways to say it, different ways to approach it. 
But we know in the sight of God, every single life matters. Your value does not depend on your stage of development or where you are located relative to the, the womb. Your value is not dependent on whether you're wanted by someone else. Your value does not depend on your degree of ability or disability or your dependence on others or any limitations that you might have. No, you, we are all valuable and precious in the sight of God simply because we are his handiwork. We are his offspring. We have been made in the image of God. Every single life from the moment of conception has value in the sight of God and should to us as well. That's the beautiful message that we take to the world, a life affirming message. We need to be a voice for the unborn and to learn how and to raise up a generation that knows how to articulate effectively, persuasively the beauty and the power and the truth of the biblical perspective on the value of human life in the womb and out from conception to natural death. But what I wanted to do is spend a moment here to pray just briefly with you about this case that's before the current Supreme Court. It shouldn't be this way, but we're in a position now where nine judges in black robes make decisions that determine the fate of millions of people and whether millions of people live or die. But it so happens right now, Texas has a limitation on abortion that's being challenged in the courts. Abortions essentially after a heartbeat is detected or as early as six weeks. Uh, there's a law in place to, re to greatly re restrict that. It's a complicated law I can't discuss right now. But the case before the court is a Mississippi law right now that some think it's possible that the court could use this case to strike down the Roe decision. Uh, just as uh, at, at one time the court struck down the decision that, that affirmed slavery. In the Dred Scott case, the court had previously argued that human beings could be the property of other human beings and later the court came and struck that down and said no that's not constitutional that's not right and this is what we're hoping and praying for though that may not happen in this case of Dobbs versus Jackson women's health it is I think likely and remember with God all things are possible but it, it's certainly possible the court could allow these state level restrictions to stay in place let me just add this Understand, if Roe is struck down, it will not ban abortion in America. That's another misconception people have. It will simply allow individual states to outlaw it. Surely some states will not, but hopefully some states would. Right now, though, it's not even permitted in our country to ban it altogether. And so, um, so what can we do? There's so many things we can do, and that's something we can talk about another time practical ways we can make a difference in the fight for life. Uh, but certainly one thing we can do is pray about this case and, and continue to pray for an end to Roe, continue to pray the Lord would use us to, to make a difference. And so I want to do that right now. Let's go to God in prayer. Holy Father, our Creator, author of life, we praise you Holy Father, and we do stand in awe of you, for you have formed us in the womb. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, dear God. And we know so many people don't understand that, and some deny it. We ask you to strengthen us to, to speak that truth and to highlight that, Father, in a world that devalues life and where lives are at stake, precious lives are at stake, dear God. Please work in us to show compassion, to minister to women in crisis pregnancies, to, to make a difference, to help those who are in need, who maybe think abortion is their only option, who, who need to know that others care, who need to know there's, there's hope and there's help. Lord, make us instruments of your grace in this way and in every way that we can. And Father, also, Help us to understand that, that we are blessed with a privilege almost unheard of in history, to be able to select our leaders, to be able to go in, in the voting booth and choose those 
who will appoint these judges, who are making these decisions. Help us to be good stewards of that opportunity and to use the political process to influence the culture for righteousness. And Father, we ask you to turn the hearts of these judges to do what is right and protect the unborn. We ask that these laws would not be struck down and that, the, that precious unborn lives would be protected, Father. And so we know this is a momentous time. And as important as it is, Father, and we plead with you, we know whatever happens, the ultimate hope is to change men's hearts through the preaching and teaching of the gospel, to live out the love of Christ in your church here, and to show that to the, to the people around us, and to lead them to know you, Father. And we know that by transforming men's hearts, that will transform the culture. And that's what we so need, Lord. Make us the light in the darkness and the salt of the earth you would have us to be. And hear our prayer for the unborn, dear God. We ask for your mercy. And it's in the name of Jesus, Father, we pray all these things. Amen.